Hey everybody! I have me some visitors here today. I have a friend named Jane and her friend Stephanie and Stephanie's from Greensboro, North Carolina and you live in Raleigh, right? Durham. Durham the Durham area. <laughs> So if you're a North Carolina person, hey, give a shout out to Jane and Stephanie. <laughs> so they, they came to watch me do a pour. And I look at my camera and I don't know why because it's not like, you know, they can see me looking. But I am going to do the Melly D inspired cloud effect because they've not seen this done. And so... The white that I have, and I don't, I'm not going to use a lot of white because that white will really take over. It is half artist loft white, flow acrylic, and then the other half is Deco Art. And Melly D uses satin enamel, which they, I have not been able to find around here, so I did, I did the outdoor living. But it doesn't matter because this is an eggshell finish. What she uses is satin and eggshell and satin are the same thing. So you just need a satin or eggshell finish added to your white. And I have even heard that you can get it from Lowe's or Home De Depot, the satin or eggshell finish white. So that is definitely worth trying. So that's what's in my cup and it's actually a little bit thick because I used it several days ago so I am actually going to add water to it because this effect is more it works better if it's a little bit watery compared to your normal pores so you really want it more on the watery side and that that lends to those beautiful puffy cloudy cells that come up and so that has Liquitex pouring medium in it and I'm going to mix two colors for you with the Liquitex pouring medium. So typically with Floetrol you do a one-to-one -one ratio and I've got I don't know maybe two ounces or so of this deep purple and maybe an ounce and a half or so of this this is a Deco Art Thalo Turquoise and um, I just eyeball it, I just squeeze it in, so I'm probably putting about a tablespoon or so of Liquitex pouring medium. This one I'm going to add a little bit more just because there's more paint in there, but it actually takes very little of this to use. You don't do a one-to-one -one ratio like you typically would with Floetrol. So you th it is expensive, the pouring medium is expensive, but it goes further because you have to use less of it with your colors. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add water. And this is where we're going to add a little bit more than usual. So I'm going to add a little bit more because I want to really very fluid consistency. Not watery, but very fluid. More fluid than usual. And that's pretty good for that consistency. And on this one, and I also wanted to add some metallic, which I don't think I have any vintage brass, which is my favorite of Deco Arts metallics. It has the most shimmer, but I don't think I have any of it. I'm going to add just a hint more. So this has strictly Liquitex pouring medium and water. No silicone, no Floetrol. I don't have my vintage brass. This is also outdoor living and this is just regular gold. 24 karat gold is like the bomb. It's super sparkly. This is just their regular gold but it's still very shimmery. So I'm going to also, and it's thick. This stuff is really thick. But my all-time favorite is the Vintage Brass. It has the most sparkle in it. It's not quite as warm as this one either. It's a little more brassy, but it's so sparkly. That's what's in all my, those pores there is the Vintage Brass. So, and this one too, I'm going to do pouring medium. I'm just going to put 
It's probably a tablespoon or two at the most. I do have my regular gold here, but it's with Floetrol, and I don't want to. I don't want to put that into this painting, so I'm going to use all of them mixed strictly with the pouring medium, just so you kind of get the feel for how Melly D does her videos. Now I think I'm going to have enough paint. I hope. What I can do too is put down a white base coat. And I can use my regular Artist Loft mixture for the base coat. It's not as important for it to be uh, with the pouring medium and all that because it's just going to be on the bottom for something to glide on. So that's nice and fluid. So this is a little bit thinner than I would typically use. Again, that was this says outdoor living. So this is the vintage brass. This is an empty container. But this is what it normally says is Americana Decor Metallics. You can also find it on their website, on DecoArt's website, and you can get it on Amazon. I've got a 16 by 20 canvas and I have learned a little trick that if you put your push pins in where these slots are, if you can see the slots, if you put your push pins in there, as long as it's in the corners, it'll keep your canvas level. But it's easier to push the push pins in where those slots are. Because <clears throat> sometimes I fight with it and it, I've had blisters on my fingers from pushing in push pins so much and trying to get them in. Um, and I can tell that it's just a bit unlevel. So I don't have one of them pushed in all the way, apparently. Is your table level? It is level. The table is level. And my, my table is lifted up on cinder blocks. <laughs> it's up high. Yeah. So, and then I'm going to get my white. So this is regular white Artist Loft. And I'm just going to put down a, just a slight wet coat. Because this part does not matter. I'll use my little Wilton fondant spreader. You can find it in my Amazon link or you can find it at Walmart. I think Michaels has them. It's in the Wilton cake section with all the other cake supplies. And I like this just because it's quick and simple. It cleans up easy. Some people use the spatulas and everything else. So I don't care if it's not even, I just want a wet coat. I'm not going to really, I'm not gonna, I, sometimes I'll take my fingers around. I'm not going to really t t worry too much about the sides because I'll probably end up going over the edges with the paint. My biggest concern is just having some wet paint on top to make sure it flows over the canvas pretty easy. This one is mixed one to one with Floetrol and it's just straight artist loft and it has water added to it. I always add water to that flow acrylic because it's not it's not fluid enough to just pour straight out of the bottle with Floetrol. Okay, so now we're going to do a cup. I think I need 12 ounces of paint for this size of 16 by 20 and we're going to layer our paints in a gradient kind of pour. So you just layer it down the side and that way it lays on top of each other as opposed to sinking in. And then I'm just kind of, I like to do the light dark contrasting Thing. So I'll do another little layer of white. But you will see with this white here, I use very little white and you're going to see how much white comes through. And if it doesn't, then I'll be pleasantly surprised. Because as sure as I say it, it won't happen. But I'm going to use all that gold. A little bit more white and I have a little bit of purple. So I'm going to do a flat.
full cup here. I should have more than enough paint here. All right, so here we go. This is the fun part. And if you hear voices, it's the thin walls. And I don't even I don't even try to keep the cup still. I don't try to keep it in a tight circle. I'm just doing a circular method. I'm liking that the gold is coming out a lot. That's great. This will be interesting. All right. So this is the official Melly D cloud effect. And I'll I'll use the uh, I'm out of I'm out of uh, butane, but I have my heat gun on backup. There's some bubbles, but there's really it's not going to really bring up cells. But look at the cells. There's not a drop of silicone in here, and look at the cells. And so when we start tilting, then you're going to get that totally cloudy effect. But I would love for any of these deeper colors or the metallics to take over, but I guarantee you it's not going to happen. I'll be surprised if it does. So I generally will start in a circular fashion. And then once I kind of figure out which side I want to tilt to, I'll go ahead and start tilting it off the canvas. But I'm liking this already. These deeper edges are going to end up pretty much going off the edge anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is go, I think I'm going to go towards this corner first. Eh. I'm trying to s stretch it out as much as I can before tilting it off. And I have a little bit of a green tone be between the metallic gold and the kind of turquoise blue mixing together. There's br it's bringing up a slight bit of a green tone through the gold area. But look, look at the purple coming through. That's pretty. Okay, so I think I'm going to tilt off this corner first. And Melly D starts tilting pretty quickly. She doesn't she doesn't waste too much time with the tilting. So see how it happens when you tilt that white will start really really coming through. See, I see all kinds of caterpillars. <laughs> All right. So maybe I'll try to stretch this down a little bit and bring this deeper purple out a little bit if I can. I don't know. That's kind of a funny shape. Let me see if I can retilt. It also reminds me of abalone. Abalone. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Something about the abalone. So that particular white is the only thing that makes that effect. It just is really a strong, it really is strong. 
and like I said I don't even think it has to be deco art satin enamel it could be a satin enamel from the paint store but it is mixed 50 50 with artist loft so half of it is regular artist loft flow acrylic which is more matte and then half is the satin or eggshell finish so I like this because the purple kind of came through on this one. My last one, the turquoisey blue, kind of came through. This one came through with a little bit more purple, so I'm actually really pleased with that. And these little deeper spots, that didn't happen the last time, which is kind of cool. I'm going to heat it just to see if anything happens. Not really. I don't even use the heat gun. It brought out it brought out more dots. That's for sure. It did bring out dots. But um, so you get a little feel of the metallic gold here. You'll get a little streak here and there, but you don't see it much except for in these. You got a little corner here, a touch on this side. So this one had way more dots popping through. But there is the Melly D method. And see what's going to happen is like right here where these, there's going to be where this gold is, probably more of the white cells are going to pop through. It's going to change over time as it dries. And I always post the dry picture at the end of the video. So if you're wondering how it dries, that is the finished dried look at the end of the video. I'm curious why I have all these little spots. That's interesting. But I will bring it up to the camera. So there it is. And maybe more of this purple will pop through. I'm not sure, but maybe it will. I bet I know why the dots are popping through is I had had a little bit of paint at the bottom of my cup from another pour that had OGX in it. It was almost an empty cup, but it did have some OGX in it before. And I think that is why I have all the dots coming through. So that's interesting. And I could keep stretching it and tilting it. I'm not going to because I really want to hold on to this right here but I could keep trying to stretch it and see what would happen with all these dots they would probably stretch out more but I really don't want to lose this spot right here so I think I'm going to leave it the way it is um, and not overwork it and this actually goes really well with Jane's jacket that she's got on today she's wearing <laughs> purple she would look so good laid across this painting <laughs> <laughs> so, doesn't that go well with it your jacket? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out all the links below the video. Uh, where it says show more on your laptop or on your mobile device, it's a down arrow. And there's all the information below about the colors I use and the products and the links and everything to Amazon. So check it out, and I will see you on the next one. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, here it is. I'm just showing you these little tiny dots everywhere. They're coming up from one of the colors. That there's a little bit of paint in the bottom of my cup before I mixed up my new mixture that had some OGX in it. So that's where all these blue, they're basically the deep blue popping through. So it's kind of taken away from the cloudy effect and I was standing here talking to Jane and Stephanie and I said, what do you think? Should I balloon smash it? So I'm going to balloon smash it. Here we go. I got to grab more paper towels though. But what I'm going to do also 
So this is what I did the last time. I did the balloon smash as I unloaded the paint off my balloon onto a canvas panel. So that's a 12 by 12 panel. It's not all on the frame, but you'll get the gist of it. So what I'm going to do is smash it in and then take the leftover paint from here and go onto my canvas and see what happens. Because the last time I did that, I had a beautiful panel and it sold right away. So I think I'm going to start outside of this area here. Look how pretty it is on the... So the less pressure you put, the, the lighter the colors come back in. I put more pressure on this one, and so it came up deeper. Just a note to self. Okay, I'm going to wipe every so often so I do get a fresh start. So what happens is these beautiful patterns appear on the balloon and you can stamp them. So the last one I called it jellyfish. And then somebody said, well it actually looks like sand dollars too. Which is true. Not that sand dollars are that color, but okay, I'm going to stamp right where the, the pretty part was because it's not pretty anymore. So isn't that funny? No gold came through. I'm going to go straight into the light with that. So that was a light one. So as you can see, I'm trying to do some contrast between my stamping over here between lights and darks as they're layered up, but the, it, you have such a beautiful effect that comes out on the balloon. How pretty that is. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's like, I want to keep the balloon. <laughs> I guess technically, technically you could let this dry on a balloon and you could cut it out of the balloon, but then it'd have to be stretched, so I guess that wouldn't work. Okay, I'm going to re-stamp that one because it totally went away. See, now it came back because I did it se a second time. So you go from dark to light, dark to light. Now I'm going to wipe back off. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> sort of like your jewelry <laughs> blobs that, you know, your drippings. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could use UFO paper and do your balloon smash excess like this instead of on the panel, do it on UFO and you make could. jewelry out of it. You could. Because I have this, I don't think, I don't know if this is UFO or what it is. Or, or glossy photo paper. I don't think this is my UFO, but it's, it does not warp. That's the cool part about it, whatever it is. Right. I don't know if it's a matte photo paper or what it is, but I have it. So, so matte would be better than glossy. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. So now I want a lighter one, so I'm going to come back over here. I'm 
Well, let's see. Turn this. I'll do one right here. So you can kind of keep layering. See, I didn't press very hard, so that made a smaller one. You really kind of need it on a surface in order to, I'm going to do that one again, so it'll spread out. So you're kind of just filling in your blank areas on your panel as well. And they can overlap. That's so cool. Even if they go off the edge just a bit. I'm going to just do that just to get some lighter paint. So the other one I did like this had more turquoise colors. Do a little right there. And I think I'm going to call that one done. I'm not going to do any more. But yes, so I can take a piece of photo paper, UPO, whatever. I'm going to go back over this one. It looks like it's dulling up. So there it goes. Go back over this one. A little lighter. Well, oh, that didn't turn out light anyway. Okay, so this one, and I'll say I can go back in and I can leave the white negative space. I can paint it another color that's deep. But you can literally do this on any kind of. This is not. It's, this is some kind of a, I don't know what it is. I think it's, it doesn't even look like photo paper, but it does not warp. That's the great part about it is you can lay it down and it does not warp when it dries. Um, yeah. yeah, so the cells may, because I had the OGX in this one, the cells may ruin the effect of what it had done last time. So, I'm trying to decide with this here. So it's purely, this is purely about experimenting. Never be afraid to experiment. Okay, so now this yellow gold over here is like turning green and there's not really any more gold, so I'm going to go over this area as well. So I don't like that one over that one. I'm going to go back over this one. So that really, you can tell when you get down all the way to the canvas, it'll show up almost white mm -hmm. in that area. So I'll go back here, add back to that a little bit. I see I can even make a stamp with a circle like I did over here by re-stamping in the same spot. That's kind of interesting. I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep just smashing. I'm not even going to wipe the balloon off. That was kind of cool the way the white came back, back in over the corners of it, or the edges.
I don't like that corner. Now, I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm going to try one little thing here. I'm going to put a little puddle of the two colors. And like a drop of white. And just see what happens. Okay, so it just makes a deeper center. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this the way it is. So it's become more of a balloon stamping effect, but, or balloon smashing. I didn't, well, I wasn't using the right terminology. Um, I'm curious to see over time if the white will pop through again or if all those cells will keep popping through that happened before, like the dark blue cells. So I think I'm going to leave this. Maybe I'll do this right here one more time. Okay. Actually, it kind of looks like flower. I don't know. It looks it's pretty neat. I don't like that little area right here. I'm going to swish my finger through. Maybe I'll stamp on the edge. I didn't like that little uh, area. Okay, now I don't like that effect with this. I like the way this looks organic right now. And I don't want to start blowing out and trying to make it look like flower shapes. So I'm not going to do that. But I kind of like this effect. So you get the cloudy effect underneath and then you pull out those colors by stamping and having that little bit of OGX in the color brought these deep cells out. So that's kind of interesting the way it did that. Okay, so we will, I'll check back with you and maybe I'll show a shot of it in about an hour or so and then I'll, I'll have a dried picture at the end of the video for you so you can see how it dries. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. I'll talk to you next time. Later. Okay, I wanted to come back one more time before uh, this dries much further just to show you how it's changed in the last 30 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to bring it up to you just so you can see how the purple has come out a lot and then you got a lot of the blue cells going on. So the uh, the color that I, the blue mixture which was phthalo turquoise is the one I must have had a, a drop of OGX in it in my cup because that's the one that keeps popping through with the darker colors. So I wanted you to I'm leaving the light off so that it doesn't reflect on it though. And then I'll show you my canvas panel. The cells are popping through on that as well, but that kind of looks like the other one that was kind of bluish that was my jellyfish painting. So here's a different version. Okay, so I'll put the picture of the dried painting at the end of the video for you, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.